Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. I got a little, a little extra, a little extra in the back of my throat today. Why? We got Ray Cash Care on the show. Thank you, sir. Thanks look for having you. me. you. Looking good, aren't I? God damn it. You huh? look good. Crisp. Me? I know. I know. Real I, crispy boy. I look good. You, you do know, look I, good. I showed you beforehand. You know. I, I, do mm-hmm. I ever? Yes. My God, sir. How do you do it? You know, I just, whenever I work out, I have pictures of the people I envision. Mm-hmm. You. Mm-hmm. You. You. Yeah. Bert, obviously, Tyler. Obviously. And what I do is I train in a nude. Of course. And I just look at you guys and thrust. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. works. You see, I've, I'm a lot leaner than I was last time I was here. I know. I owe it to Bert Koontz. You were probably, last time you were here, I would say 7% <laughs> body fat. You look like you're about 5 right now. Thank you. Where, what do you think you're at? I have no clue. Nowhere near that. I'm much higher than that. I, I just Come wear on. it. Oh, yeah. It's light. It's smoke and mirrors, man. I jack off to your Instagram. You're I, shirtless every day on there. You look great. Thank you. Yeah. For 30, I look good, right? Yeah. <laughs> 29. Uh, D'Anthony, why don't you tell the audience where that picture is? Last time you were on the show, Ray, you said you were going to bring an autographed picture of yourself for us to display on the desk. And uh, it's here. It's here. Why don't you read that to the audience, D'Anthony? Well, this picture, I believe, is from uh, the selection, right? Yes, sir. The mm-hmm. selection. Uh, so it says, two drinking bros. And this is a picture of Ray, by the way. It says, I made Bert the man he is. Yeah. <laughs> And we're going to leave that right up here. <laughs> That's for there you, Bert Koontz. Look at that. Jamie, go to that on, uh, on the used tubes right there. Look at that pick. How old was that guy in that picture? Uh, what was that, three years ago? Three, four years ago? Three, four, four years ago. Yeah, so I'm 48, four. so 45, God 44. Damn it. How, you do it? How do you do it, dude? <sighs> you know, is, it, is it natural? Are you, are you juicing? Oh, I'm, I'm roiding everywhere every day. I would, too. What's the good shit? You look like you're on the good shit. I'm not on the good shit. I, 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 I take TRT. I take a tes- uh, shot of testosterone a week to keep me. It's, mm-hmm. it's not just that. <laughs> it's supplements. It's CBD oils. It's, you know, I'm on all kinds of different things. Sponsors. You know, I use Trulene. I use Bub's Naturals. Okay. And I use the CBD from Naked Warrior Recovery. Now, Bub's Naturals, that sounds almost like a fucking porn site to me. Yeah, it does. It does. Well, that's MCT oil and, uh, and uh, collagen protein. Yeah, so it's I'm, good stuff. I, yeah, it's well, you know it, is, it, is. it is good stuff. Yeah. It's great stuff, and it, it's working. You know, but it also takes a little bit of rolling your fucking sleeves up and getting dirty. I mean, I work out. It does, yeah. I, again, oh, your your Instagram is impressive because during these quarantine times that we're in, mm-hmm. you've somehow found a way to pull off the craziest fucking workouts I've ever seen. It's it's you and Rudy are onesie twosies in this. Yeah, well, you know, people department. are always saying I don't, I don't, I can't, I won't, and I'm just like, man, take off that fucking apostrophe T and. That won't turns into one, and that can't turns into can. And I just started looking around in the garage, and I'm like, man, I got some buckets, and I got some some weight, and I got some. We all have water, you know. You have water, water mm-hmm. and toilet paper, fucking mile high now. So I'm like, let's just come up with some crazy workouts, and we started that, and then it kind of branched snowballed, off. yeah, it man. snowballed. People were asking, I'm going to start doing some uh, recordings mm-hmm. and making it a little sexier. It's mm-hmm. just raw, you know. What you see is what you get. And now I'm doing these challenges where I'm, they're mental challenges. You know, we talked about what I do every Sunday Uh and um, that's why I'm, you know, my legs are sore right now. I did a half a mile. I just pick these crazy fucking workouts and just say, you know what? I wonder what happens if I lunge for a half a mile while I be sore. Well, a little sore. So today I'm going to, when I get home, when we're done with this, I'm going to flip a big tire for a half a mile. And if I'm not sore, I'll do a mile. So I just keep trying to find ways to mentally, you know, push myself instead Mm. of this whole because everybody thinks it's physical. It's not. It's just that kind of mental self-discipline that you need. Yeah, yeah. Especially in these times that we're going through where everybody's just using this whole, you know, Kung Fu virus or whatever the fuck it is for a reason to just be lazy. I, I find this time to excel. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm reading more. Mm-hmm. I'm in, I'm, I fucking lost nine pounds. I'm in better shape. My fucking wife, I, I told you guys that. Shredded. She's so shredded when we make yeah. love now. I got to wear a top because I wear the uh, bed shirt. Yeah. She's, she's got abs. I don't. And, um... We're just, you know, I, I, it's like anything, military. You know, we find you got to control the chaos. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not letting the chaos control me. And hopefully this shit's going to end soon. And when it does and whenever fucking whoever turns the switch back on to the world, right. you know, I'm going to be running. I'm going to already be ahead of the game because a lot of people are just sitting on their ass trying to collect their check and waiting. And I'm not going to do that shit. I haven't asked for a penny. I'm just getting more resourceful, you know, and mm. 
trying to get, you know, sponsorships and this and that and coaching, you name it, I'm doing it, man. Yeah, because, you know, I started following you pretty heavily after the last time you were on the show. Mm -hmm. Dan was like, hey, man, I got this guy. He was a fucking blast all goddamn day long, and he'd be a great guest on the show. You came on. You crushed. Everybody loved you. Thank you. Couldn't wait to have you back. So I started following you on Instagram, and you and your wife work out together. Yeah. You guys do a lot of working out together. Was that part of the relationship of like, all right, if I'm going to marry somebody, they've got to have the same lifestyle as yeah. me? Yeah, it, it helps. It, you know, we have similar goals. Um, I mean, I say this with all due respect. My wife is a savage fucking bitch, and I love her. I mean that in the best way. Mm -hmm. Um, we're competitive, and I try to surround myself with people who have like-minded goals and who want to be better. And I mean, uh, but a lot of people do that, but then they marry the complete fucking opposite of them, and then they end up having what? A divorce, you know, because it's the four pillars of success in military and life, teamwork, problem-solving, leadership, and communication. And, you know, when I met my wife, she was a PT, you know, phenom, and we just have a lot in common. And I mean, and it's not only that, but... A lot of people don't work out, and the thing that pisses me off is I tell people, the better in shape you get, I'm not talking the way you look, but sure. health from the ins the longer you're going to fucking live on earth. Yeah. You know, like, I want to have grandkids mm -hmm. and great-grandkids. You know, I'm fucking Irish. I like to drink, and I like to spend time with my family, and I don't want to be like one of these guys that goes to bed at 45 and dies because, you know, he was just waiting for tomorrow, or waiting for the right. coronavirus to, to end before, you know, tomorrow I'll start, you know? Yeah, my well, whole you're going to need... Uh a time machine to die at 45 at this point, my man. Because you're right. old as fuck. 48. I'm 48. I'm a... Rudy, you know, it's funny. I just did that competition with Rudy. Rudy Reyes is three months and a... Three, three months and three days. I can't do the math. His birthday's the 1st of December. Mine's March 5th. Do the math. But, yeah, and... My point is... Both age, you guys look great, though. Thank you. Age yeah. means nothing, nothing, you know? Yeah. I mean, fuck. I told you you look great, and you gave me some bullshit excuse. I don't work out in three years or whatever, but... You look good. It's true. I don't know how Dan does it. I've never seen him work out. And this is God's honest truth. We spend almost every goddamn waking second with each other, especially on the road. Mm. I've never seen you work out once. Ask where a gym is. Uh, ask for a reference of where a gym is. Uh, Can you even spell gym? J. J. I. -M. I -M. There's oh. the J silent. And, I, and also, smoking weed all day long, mm. and there's some form of drink, and yet you're in... This weird shape that it's like, it's, it's, I, I, I can't describe it. He's probably got one of those fucking Chuck Norris machines at home. And he doesn't show anybody <laughs> he does. He's total, on that motherfucker at night. The total gym, yeah. yeah the total, total gym. gym. That yeah. and the, uh, what was the Susan Summers thing, the little ab thing? Remember uh, the, oh, the thigh master. Thigh master. master. We yeah. actually have one of those fucking things. Do you really? Yeah, my wife had it from her mom and she still has it. And every now I try to get her, but it gets me hot when she starts doing it. Did she do it nude? She does it with heels on. It's fucking hot. Ah, I like that. She gets about two pumps in, and then I start. Then you get and about two, get pumps two pumps in. in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nailed it. Um, we used a Bowflex in a movie with Kevin Sorbo once, and uh, those things are... Dual resistance. Way to go, brother. Yeah. Terrible, by the way. I was, un I was unaware of how shitty a Bowflex actually was, um, and so you actually pull it back out because we yeah. live in the future now. Yeah. Bowflex back then, you were like, oh, my God, this machine will change my life. Yeah. It, but you it, don't need a doesn't. lot to change your life. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach people. You don't need these fancy fucking mm. memberships and gyms. You just I tell everybody, if you, you just need a fancy imagination. And people have been literally blowing me up. So I'm finally like, you know what? I'm going to go out to L.A. Mm -hmm. um, on the 12th. I'm going to video a whole bunch of shit. I'm going to put it on Trainer Eyes. And people will be able to just, you know, it's cheap because i got to pay for editing. You guys know how to do yeah, yeah, the whole absolutely. fucking team here. Yeah. And I'm just going to, you know, hey, let's help people. I mean, I'm not trying to make people Navy SEALs. I mean, I can do that. That's not what I'm doing. I just want to make people better, you know? And it's, and I always tell people, you know, it's modification. If you can't do this, then do this. If you can't do this, because I can't stand when people are like, you know, when I do my 1,020 push-ups, I can't do push-ups. Okay, well then do them on your knees. Right. My wife will do a couple hundred, and then she goes to her knees. And I laugh, ha, ha, my wife's on her knees. But if she can't do that, then she'll go to something else. Right. I even told her, fucking blink mm. your eyes a thousand. Do something. I go to sleep. Yep. So. Uh, so Dan gets real high and then he goes to sleep and that's yeah. pretty much his workout. But mm. if Dan fucking came on Sunday and did it and he was in pain, I know Dan he can act all fucking uh, how you do. I love it, but he would train somehow, maybe smoke more dope and he'd come back and it gets easier every <laughs> week. That's what I love. Yeah, I mean I used to actually work out religiously. It just I don't really care about that. Well, I've seen you and you're much. a big dude now. It's mm. not you know you're like dude when I work out I get jacked. I mean, I'm a big dude and you're fucking jacked. You're still jacked. I know, but I like I have a really high metabolism. But if I like actually start doing 
like working out hard, I get swole as fuck. And uh, what the audience doesn't know is that Ray doesn't have pants on. Yeah. Um, and he's trying to show me his dick right now. Uh, Ray, stand up for you, if, if you would. Um, let that. Uh, oh, I'm caught. Hold on. Yeah, Back you got to get that, that cable up there. There it is. Yeah. Yep. There's, I mean, that's the whole thing right there. That's that the dick whole is package. real close that's to me. The whole... <laughs> is he touching me? <laughs> yeah. It's, yep. it's touching me. Definitely. Your, it is on your arm right ha, now. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> last time you were on the show, Ray, you pulled out your dick and balls. Yeah, and, I guess uh, Ray and I have to get married now. I don't know how that works. I think that's how it works. Yeah. I think that's how it's worth. Beautiful hog at 48, too. For whatever you're on, like, surprising length and, uh, and decent ball size there. Girth. Yeah. Girth. Well, you can't yeah. just take the, the test. you got to take uh, nestrozole and fucking. Yeah, you got to take stuff to counter out the balls. You don't want yeah. the balls too small. You no. know, you don't want, because mama, you, she doesn't want to be holding, like, I don't know, like a. Like a plum. Yeah, well, I want her to hold, like, an orange. Yeah, oh, two really? big oranges. I, I want yeah. the woman to look at me and say, uh, "Gee, you got big balls." What is wrong <laughs> with you? Like, is there? Do I need to call a doctor? That's what I, I want. I want to look like that. What was that movie? Um, it had uh, Ryan Reynolds in it with the dog. Higher Learning. No, no, nope. kidding. No, <laughs> when the, had, the bulldog had the giant balls, and they. they oh ju- yeah, oh, Van well, Wilder. Van Wilder. Yeah. I want to have balls yeah. like that bulldog. That's yeah. what I want. Just, to, just they're like full of. Cream. That's your dream, huh? So yeah. instead I of want tiny instead balls, instead I want of smaller balls. Like John Hamm used to walk around with those gray suede pants with his with a half chub all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what if you did that and it was balls? Uh, just if you're all balls. Just, yeah. Did you ever know somebody who was all balls? I knew a guy who was all balls, and it, it's just it's weird, man. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Rextus was his name from college. But you got <laughs> there has to be some type his of proportion because you don't want to be like <laughs> you don't want the balls to offset the cock. You know, it's got to like I want it to amplify. Like I want sure. them to, to make it accentuate the length and the girth. You right. want a real nice feng shui with your dick and balls. Yeah. 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 You still want to focus on Axl Rose, you know, but it's nice to have Slash behind you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Axl this conversation is detoured severely. Ah, it yeah. always does. Welcome yeah. to Drinking Bros. Um I would say this, with, with the huge, gigantic testicles, as you get older, mm-hmm. though, dragging those fucking balls around is a lot of fucking work. Um, you know, stretches out the sack and everything else. <laughs> and I always go back to that old man who sat on his testicles mm. and then had to get them, you know, removed to yeah. the hospital. Because uh, he was unaware of it, and he was also too fucking old to get up. Well, you just got to buy a ball bra. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, but I'd rather have big balls from, from fucking running the world and being the best version of me and... Having a, even a you know if I have to wheel them around with me then yeah and a wheelbarrow. having them up inside of me in little 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 baby balls I don't want that carry them shits yeah, that's, them. A, throw yeah. Them them. that's a real design flaw by the way that our dick and balls are outside of our body and exposed all the time like dogs got it right their dicks <laughs> all tucked up and then it's like yeah. twist that lipstick and it comes out the balls are kind of I mean balls have uh, or dogs have balls on the outside but I feel like evolution fucked up there. Like, yeah. our testicles should be inside of our body. Samurais can suck them yeah, back up into their stomachs. I heard stomachs. that. I wanted yeah. to ask if that's true. Yeah. I thought it was sumo wrestlers for the, the for when they jam in each other, they hit each other, that they have they can control it. Can you imagine watching sumo wrestling and the guys are just like... Keep... Buck naked? No, but then... <laughs> Take off the diaper. That's what I want to see. Then I watch it all goddamn day long. One guy gets kind of... I took the diaper off. Yeah. One guy gets kind of hurt, and then in a show of sportsmanship, the other guy goes over to help him up or whatever. And he picks them up, and they just, like, lock eyes. Oh, God. And stare into each other's <laughs> eyes. And then the diapers come off. I had this conversation earlier in Ross Petter Revolution with my wife, and I said to her, I said, nothing makes me laugh harder than a graphic gay sex scene hmm. in a movie. One of my favorite things to this day, uh, we were talking about Behind the Candelabra, where Michael Douglas was butt-fucking Matt Damon, and, and it was a tight shot. It was close. It wasn't far away. And you could see him just coming into Matt Damon's ass, right? And it's just right in the camera. And the beauty of this one was, why it was one of my favorites, was he was playing Liberace, Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Douglas, and his fetish was to make the guys that he was fucking look like himself. So Matt Damon had plastic surgery to look like Liberace, and Liberace was essentially fucking Liberace. Um, Wow. And the way he came was amazing. It was one of those poppers into the nose, too, and just like, ah, ah, ah. Greatest, one of the greatest uh, male sex scenes of all time. So when you give a wide gate like this, like you're doing now, and I would highly recommend you watch this on YouTube, subscribe to Drinking Bros Podcast. 
when your dick and balls is out, like mm-hmm. I feel as comfortable as if my parents are coming over for a Sunday dinner. I do. I, I, I think we could have went with a different chair design for my ass because it's sweating. Well, we weren't. We, we weren't. We weren't prepared for it. We weren't prepared for it. Um, but you, you accompanied me. You, you accommodated me. I, I was. I, I'm the talent. I Thank pre- you. I prepared for you, by the way. Thank you. Because um, I, I was unaware. Last time you were on the show, you pulled your dick out. Um, second person in show history. Thank you. Uh, so now you lead the way. Um, as far as dicks being put up, sorry to the Rangers out there. But yeah, actually, I didn't want to. I didn't want to take away. my pants off, but I have to be better than the Army. Mm-hmm. So, Correct. Correct. Um, and I, my goal in life is to piss Burt Koontz off. Yes. So I figured, me taking my pants off is a tribute to you, Burt Koontz. Yeah, you're welcome. That's Bert. gonna. I'm you're gonna pay for Bert. that one later. <laughs> so we we actually got you a gift mm. uh, on the show. Um, one of our new sponsors is Manscaped.com. Oh, I've heard about them. The best. So it, it is only products. I'm going to pull this over here if you can read it. Your balls will thank you. So all of these products mm-hmm. are strictly only made for trimming your pubic hair and That's your it. balls. I love it. That's it. And they've got settings on the razor here. This is the Lawnmower 3.0. It uh, plugs in, rechargeable. Um, promo code Drinking Bros for mm. uh, 15% off there at Manscaped.com. This is for you. Um, oh, we, my. Yeah. We get this. Can I take a look at this real quick? Absolutely. Yeah, go I got an idea. Pull it open. Oh, you know what? I, you open it up for me. You open it up for me. I'll show you. I want you to be a part of this. Can you it, help me? I wonder if it needs to be charged. If oh, so, if, are you thinking about shaving your pubes off? Is I that actually wanted to. Sh- I don't have much to trim, but I wanted to trim it and then have Dan catch. Oh, yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> that's. But I'm the talent. You're supposed The customer's always right. What's going on here? In this case, the customer can go fuck themselves. No, he's that? the customer, and say. he's always right. Let's see. Let's see he's if this always works. Right. If this works, this will be epic. Yeah, see if you... Because it, it does need to... Oh, it works. Is it really? Let, let the audience Look, hear there's that. there's not much. Look. Let the audience hear that. There we go. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Give it a nice shave, dude. Uh, and that's much. that's on different settings too. So you can go on a, you can go on a one or you can okay. go on a two on that. This is what's going to happen. This is going to go bad real quick, right? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I'm going to blow you a kiss. Mm. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, oh my mm. god! <laughs> for the audio listeners, Ray Cash Care just shaved off his pubic hair and then blown it into the air on Dan's jacket. Yeah. Um, would I, would we've, I be a plank owner of that? Yes. I, that means the first. One more thing. Hey, uh, and before you uh, go too far here, we got the, this is called the Crop Preserver. It's ball deodorant. It is specifically for your testicles. By the way, I used this uh, about three or four days ago. It's the finest I've ever, smell that real quick in your hands too. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that nice? Hold on. I, you know what else we could do? This Watch was this. unplanned, but. Yeah. Oh, this is, hold on. Oh. Just, could you lift him up so I could just get to the. Hold on. You, there we go. Do you want to oh, smell? Oh, there we go. He's, I'll give you five bucks if you smell my balls right we, now. Five bucks. We're right now, for the audio listeners, we're right now in uh, what we call that the speed bag. Um, he's just working over that ball sack. <laughs> okay, he's, right now. okay. Nope, he's pulling his gun out. <laughs> nope. Okay. I thought he was going to smell my balls, but we're pulling guns out. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate the You're gifts. welcome. Uh, this comes with uh, refined cologne as well. Oh. So you get that. Whenever you order the this whole shit here, uh, you get you get a you get a bunch of stuff, man. Uh, oh, and this is a ball toner actually. Um, so, <laughs> uh, it says, it says gonna, ball toner okay, on what, here. What does at Manscaped. What does this do? Tone my balls? Com. Yeah, tones your whole. I don't shit. have my reading glasses on. This one has me intrigued. Yeah, yeah, yeah it I should. didn't. It I, haven't, I haven't used that yet. Um, and this is a foot duster for uh, foot deodorant if you need it, and it's cooling. Um, oh and all this comes with a, a nice little dop kit from little Manscaped. Kit. Oh, thank you. And that is for you, my man. I'm going to start coming on here every week. I know. And so you can take all that oh. home with you. We, we we brought it for you. Didn't know you were you were coming pantsless today, but you we're know, proud of we're proud of you. It just happened. It just went with it. Max yeah, yeah, Flex, yeah, right? You, you know to. that saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just flex with it. You bet. Maximum effort. It's uh, you know, it's like Lee Harvey Oswald says. I'm you probably going to lose a lot of followings after this. Nah, but that's okay. no. I don't think you will. No, that's not the worst. You miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. Mm. Lee Harvey Oswald said that. I like that. Uh, so did John, John Wilkes Booth uh, said that as well. Um, when now your wife does she go full shorn as well? Is that a thing <laughs> that you guys do together? Yes. It is. Yes. Because a lot of couples, that's why I ask, a lot of couples try to try to match it up. Yes. Because uh, I'll ask my wife. I'll be like, hey, are we cool to do this or whatever? Because do you enjoy this? Because if not, I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so she goes oh, full yeah. shorn too. I, would, I don't even know. My wife has blonde hair. She could be a brunette for all I, I don't know. 
Gotcha. She's never bald as a yeah. God yeah, bless yeah, her. yeah. yeah. For, first time you met, like she was. Oh yeah. She, okay. Oh yeah. Takes yeah. care of her. I feel yeah. like bush to bush is dangerous. Sense yeah, it, it sense is. mixing and that's yeah. I don't mind Friction. it. I like I'm a '70s dude, so it's just like all right, cool man. I don't care if the bush is grown out. You like a big bush? Yeah, I don't go. F- I don't go bald eagle. Really? I don't go bald eagle. Yeah, but I think and this is we were talking about this uh, off air. Uh, I forget who this was with. It, it depends on what your first porn was and what you really got down on, um, or what stage of life you're in currently. Yeah, because it does change <laughs> over the years your sexual preferences. Mm-hmm. Um, big asses wasn't a thing for me. No. Um, on the come up, you know? Yeah. But then once the Kardashian sex tape hit, I was like, oh, there's a fun thing. That's a flirty thing What's that I thing didn't now? know about. Big like, asses. If, big, uh, that's, yeah. that's your, that, your that, topic? What but, about you? But that was new. That was new Training? for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, it's the best of both worlds. Uh, the, the tranny? I, yeah. Trannies are a way to fuck dudes without being gay. Well, you know what I mean? You could fuck them. Here's the thing. Do you prefer eye contact? Are they on top? Are they writing you? I make eye contact from the time they walk into the room. You don't make yeah. eye contact with me from the minute I walk in the room. Well, he's I not going to fuck actually. you, though. He's not going to fuck you. No, you thought well, about it. I have thought about it, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I like uh, like just short, athletic women. Not short, necessarily, but like not tall, either. Okay, right. so short, That's athletic women is, okay. is your... That's my thing, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Got it? Gotcha, yeah. Uh, how long have you been married, Ray? I've been married fifteen, going on fifteen years. Fifteen years, okay. Yeah, cool. Still keeping it funky, still keeping it fresh. You Kids, know? yeah. Well, I have a, a tw- well, I have a son from her previous marriage. I adopted. He's twenty six. Okay, and I have a little girl who's going to be turning twelve <laughs> in August, and she is just blowing up. And I'm trying to deal with all. How that. crazy is that? It's fucking horrible. It's horrible. I want to kill. Every single kid I see on the street. I mean, I mean, I will. I'll fuck a 11 year old kid up. If he's yeah, yeah, oh, for yeah. Sure. I do I, that. I, I don't even have kids that I do yeah. that. Um, yeah. And she is. She is. You know, when I say my, she's gorgeous, I mean, I'm talking about my own kid, but she literally like we go for walks at night and her and mom walk and they just she's going to look like my wife. And I'm like, oh, my God. And is that brutal? Is it, it is as brutal. A and, it, and it's it's, you know, a higher power paying me back for all the shit I did when I was a team guy and. Till I found the, you know, and I mean, you know, me and my wife, we still turn it up. Don't get me wrong, just because I'm 48, but yeah, I'm like, oh my god, is someone ever going to? And that I just like, it's changed my whole perspective on things. Having a kid, the especially answer. a daughter. You yeah. know, when you have a son, it's like, yeah, that a boy, exactly. But when it's a girl, it's like, holy shit. So much love and respect to all you parents out there who have a girl. Um, my heart goes out to you, and you have to worry about so much more. Yeah. So I, a buddy of mine, um, oh, he's got an 18 year old daughter, mm-hmm. and g- gorgeous. I mean, complete smoke show. And it's one of those things where you dance around it where you're like, man, you know how hot your daughter is, right? Like, this oh. is kind of crazy, but you f- I feel terrible for him. Where I, I'm like, I, I feel like showing is better than telling. What do you mean? Uh, like, instead of saying, hey, your daughter's really hot, then you just hook up with his daughter. And then no. T- no, no, no. She's 18. What's the problem? That is <laughs> off limits, my man. Would you ever do that? You can't do that. No, man. Yeah, no. You can't do that. Okay, go. <laughs> go Fuck, no. Um, <laughs> I can only go so far. Yeah, that, <laughs> but so I, 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 I approached him about it one time. I was like, you know, right? And he goes, yeah, I know. It's fucking miserable. Yeah. And I was like, it is. And it's, it's, a, it's a constant miserable. It's mm-hmm. like. Everywhere you go. He goes, no matter what. If I'm at a fucking, if we go to lunch, if we go on vacation, if yeah. we go. Everybody's staring at my daughter, and he goes, it "Fucking sucks, dude." And but like, was, we'll go to like we went to Disney, and you know, we go out and have the nice dinners mm-hmm, at night, mm-hmm. and we usually take like my 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 wife and like kind of our babysitter who's like in college and she's gorgeous, and my daughter, and they all you know summertime they all dress up, and mm-hmm. it's like you even see dads that are walking with their moms looking at them. I'm just like, you motherfucker, you know, you just yeah. want to because I'll, I'll I'll throw down at Disney. I will from of the course. kids like that one video with the people they were off. I wouldn't do that, but yeah, but you're just like, come on, man. Uh, you know, and I, you know, you think, oh, you know, everybody prays that they're going to have beautiful kids and you do. And then when it happens, you're like, fuck, I've got a beautiful <laughs> daughter and I've got all these guys, you know, and they're, you know, they're going to be swarming. I mean, I still get guys hitting on my wife. I'm like, hey, yeah. bro, I appreciate it. Beat it. You know, when's the last time you got in a street fight? Ooh, um, well, working with what I did overseas, I did that a couple, but that was, no, he wasn't. He wasn't a local guy. He just got his ass whooped. Um, it's been years since you know I got an actual brawl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I try not to bother anybody. People usually leave me alone. And I leave them alone. One would think, uh, but I always wonder, right? Because yeah. it's you're deceptively huge. Thank you. It, yeah. So it's it's one of those things where, eh, if you were out, you'd be like, eh, fuck this guy. You know, as, 
Because really like, you're yeah. not a six five. You no, know. I wish. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I think if I was six five, built the way I'm, I think I'd get tested a lot more. Ah, that's a good big point. Big guys like Kevin Nash, I've talked. You know, a couple. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. That's know, a good big point. guys get tested all the time. I just. Um, I mind my own business. You know, don't fuck with my old, my girls. Mm-hmm. And we have no problem. I mean, guys can call me whatever they want. I don't care. You know, you're this, you're that. You know, I've been called. I tell people I've been called. <laughs> I've been called better by worse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's not a good. You know, I'm a loser. That come on, dude. You can do better than that. But when you start fucking with my my queen or my pack, that's when I'm a. Sure. And, and who wouldn't, right? I mean, somebody fucks with your old lady. I'm, I'm get, I guarantee yeah. we're going to see a different side of you. I know. I was, uh, somebody fucks with your tranny fought, or fought your pot. Somebody like you're six months crazy. ago downtown. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, with you in particular, mm-hmm. you're one of those people that a lot of a lot of people look up to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were talking about Bert Koontz earlier. Yeah, I love him. I've noticed some changes in Bert, and I'm curious if you've noticed the same ones that we have. Okay. I, I know exactly what they are. Go ahead. He's lost weight. Yep. Me. Yep. He's shredded now. Suddenly. Me. Um, all of this started on your Instagram first Me? and then his. Now he's doing challenges. I mean, yes. seriously, Bert Koontz, where's the picture at? Right yep. here. There it is. Right there. Listen, <laughs> Bert Koontz has actually called me crying saying, I wish I was you. I wish I was you. And I'm like, Bert, I know. Because here's the thing, you know, I love him and Tyler Grab. Nothing but respect for him. But if I told him, if I had to pull you through the selection any more than I did to make you look good and, and Tyler... Tyler calls me all the time. Ray, I've got this scene. I don't know what to do. I'm like, okay, let me help you, Tyler, because you are the world's greatest fake Navy SEAL. No, I'm, they're do, no, I love them both. They are fucking doing amazing things. Um, Bert, I guarantee Bert's going to see me and punch me in the face. Tyler, Tyler doesn't even answer my text. He doesn't fucking answer. Well, he, he gets a, like six thousand texts a day. To his so here's the deal, and I'll I'll stick up for Tyler on this one. When you're shooting a one hour drama like yeah. that, you have zero life whatsoever. And as fun as it seems and it sounds, yeah. When you're on set every day, and Dan got to visit him on set, like mm-hmm. it's fucking brutal, man. They've been asking me to come out, and it's funny. Tyler you should. It's Tyler fun. went live with Max. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they had like six hundred people in there, and everybody's you know. Tyler's just doing his thing, and I just wrote, hey, Ty, it's Ray. And he goes, he's just talking, he goes, hey, Ray, and then went right back to it. I was like, and I, I got all giddy. I'm like, Tyler said hi to me. But then I text him, <laughs> nothing. You know, and he actually came on one of my lives the other day asking, uh, I was on with Forged, okay. talking about the meaning of the Murph. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It pisses me off. Everybody's like, Ray, you're a fucking savage. What's your time? Who cares what my fucking time is? I don't do the Murph for the time. I do the Murph the point for the is sacrifice. That you do it, yeah. 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 And Tyler came on and we were talking about, and he's like, hey, what, you know, what, what charity are you talking about? We said the Murph and then was silent. But so I think he's checking in on me. You know, he's making sure that his mentor is still mentoring. Of you course. Know? See of how course. I, I, you I, have I, to, you have to, I love him to death. You know, I wish I get hit. I know they do. I literally get hit probably 20 times a day. Still, is there going to be a selection too? No. Should there be? I, I wish to God there was. I one of the best things I've ever done. I seriously, of all the things I've done, working with those guys was the most. Ama- Donnie, yeah, I love Donnie. Um, call him the Black Hammer. You know, he's just mm. not because he's got a mule the size of a fucking Buick. But it's because does he in real life? Oh yeah, but he he can Didn't hit. Know that. 160 yeah. pounds. You know, big fighter. Mm-hmm. Whew, he can hit, and, and then you got Big Capone, and then Haggerty's the one that fools you. Why? Cause he fucking he uh, he owns a brewery. He drinks beer all day long, and he does a thousand sit ups like every other day. Really? Who the fuck does a thousand? I mean, I do a thousand push ups, but sit ups? Yeah, that's a lot. No, I'm not. Straight. Oh boy! Straight. Oh, a thousand in a row? <laughs> in a row? Uh. Uh-uh. uh I'm sorry. That's just not gonna happen. I, when I I seriously I can't even fucking <laughs> count to a thousand. That's why I do seventeen on the minute. I cannot count to a thousand. Yeah. And he's just can? like, hey, you want to come? We'll drink some beer and do some. No, I don't want to do a thousand fucking sit ups with you. It's ridiculous. <laughs> That's a weird question to ask a man. Alec, turn on that air. I'd like to shrink his dick up a little bit. It's um, still just. Yeah, it's. it's I want to dip it's it in this. It's huge, dude. Sh- turn that air on real quick and uh, shrink that up. Put it on maybe 65 or 66 in the room. I, we got to take a couple <laughs> inches off of that thing. I don't know. Look at that. I don't know uh, who it was, mm-hmm. but. Do you remember that video Jared sent us like two years ago? Some guy, and it starts off, and there's just like a, it's a, it's a, uh, shot of a cup of coffee. Yep. Sweating. On the. Uh, so get that well, you get the ball on. stuff you on. It actually smells really on. good. It smells very nice. Uh, Manscaped.com. Let me get it to you a little bit there. Promo code yeah, you got to use You got to yep. loft. You got to yeah. loft. Uh, yeah. So there's. It's just a picture of a, a kitchen island and a cup of coffee on it. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, a naked dude comes into frame and stirs it with his dick. Yeah. Could you get your asshole? Oh, oh, Mike. Sorry about that. 
Jesus sorry Christ. about that. It's, sorry. That's called the continental breakfast. That is a piece of sausage. If and I was two a eggs. hot woman, would that have offended you? Yes. No, it would not. You fucking liar. I don't dude. like people being close to me. <laughs> not a fan. Hey, Ray, do you think he ever gets married, yes or no? Yes. Really? And I think when he does, I think she's going to own his ass. That's what I, I literally think he's going to turn fucking a 180 and go, hi, you should take it Holloway, and I'm here. I really do. I think you are going to be, she's going to be like a pegger, and she's going to fucking own you. Wow. I full do. pegger, dude. Look at that. We'll see what happens, I guess. A pegger. Yeah. Because I told him, I was like, dude, when you get married, it's going to change. You realize that. You're going to have to watch The Bachelor and shit like that no. all the time. There's got to be a compromise. No. I, would yes. not, I would not marry someone who watches The Bachelor. All right. So, Ray, in your relationship, what do you give on with your wife that is an absolute necessity that you feel? Like, all right, cool, man. She does a lot of shit to make me happy. Here's what I do for her to make, you, make eat, her happy. Eat her ass. That's what oh, I want to do. That's, Besides that. That's a prerequisite. Sexual uh, shit is off no, the table. No, sexual shit. Um... You know, just try to. I'm not a big like listener. I don't really. <laughs> normally, I don't really care what other people think. I only. I mean, I'm, I care about me. No, yeah. I care about other people. Um, that's the one thing I've really had to work on. You know, give and take with. You know, even if you're having a bad day, I try to put her first with everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always off running around, not like you guys, but here and there, coming back, trying to pick up where I left off. And I definitely think the one thing I had to do was just kind of prioritize. I always talk about prioritize, strategize, and monetize. How to gain wealth from sure. everything, not even just from a monetary standpoint, but, you know, get that emotional wealth from her. Just, you know, like, know when her special days are. I don't forget shit. Like, mm -hmm. you know, thank God for the, the reminders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put that shit out like like three of them beforehand, you know, like Mother's Day, right? Yes, mm -hmm. Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Today. Um, Today, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, something's planned. You yeah. know, something's planned for her um, that she doesn't know about. And I, I went above and fucking mm -hmm. beyond and I had to pull some strings, so <laughs> yeah. I can actually I, I can actually tell you what it is, right? Yeah, because this isn't airing till Sunday. Yeah, so, so you're good I, to go. we literally drive to a place called um, Christ. I forgot the name of it. Um, give me a sec. Citrus. It's the, one of the nicest brunch places in Virginia Beach. My Was buddy. it open? Uh, no. Okay. No. You can deliver. All right. So we go there, and then he also owns a limo business. You order the food that you want, the brunch with the mimosos. You get in the fucking car, and he drives you down the beach, and you can sit there with the family and have a nice brunch. Mm. So that's I'm doing great. that for, but you know, before it would have been like, you know, you're married to me. Happy Mother's Day. And that's yeah. not the way you got to do it. So no, I've, no. I've definitely I'm evolving. You got to man. You got to give and take in a relationship. I mean, yeah. You know, I know, and I met your old. She's crazy as crazy as shit, but that works for you. Yeah, yeah, Jesse. Yeah, yeah she's, out of she's crazy, and you know, you just got to find the right crazy. But you're yeah. gonna have to change some shit. You know, definitely you can't. You can't go out howling at the moon like you used to and shit. There will be repercussions. Absolutely. At least with my wife, there will be. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And She'll go out and burn it down with me, but, you know, like when I go to Vegas for the boys, mm -hmm. I don't, I literally, we hang out. We don't get crazy because mm -hmm. I don't want her ass going to Vegas because she'll end up doing a lot more than me. She's hot. She's hotter than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can believe that. And here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Like with girls, they can literally go anywhere and get dick. Oh, yeah. Doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter what age. I know. If you're 60, you can roll into a bar and be like, all right, who wants to get blown? Yeah. And you're going to get, you know, nine do. Okay. I'm yeah. fucking down, you know? I like it. I, yeah. This one's quiet today. I don't know what's going on. I won't I, even look at him It now. depends on his drugs, whatever drugs he's taking today. I don't uh, think he's happy with me being here. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been the fact that you blew pubes on him, or you just keep showing him your dick and balls mm. over look and look over look. and over again. You see that? He's uh, jacking himself off yeah, yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right in front of you. But it's left-handed, so you can't take him seriously. No. But I am left-handed. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't take any left-handed person seriously. Can I hold your hand now? Can I hold your hand Well, there's hand sanitizer over there. Yeah, Who's we're we're uh, we're past the COVID stitch. We're past the six feet here uh, for everyone. I hope you guys are going to edit most of this. No, we're really not editing good. any of it. It smells really good, too. It smells nice. Really nice. Uh, speaking of which, we got some sponsors to pay for this whole shit yeah. wagon to be on the air. Uh, Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. You have a ghost bed? You and your I don't. We've actually been looking at them. Be serious. We have. the best. We've been dope. looking at them. Everything they're, is 25% off uh, all the way through the quarantine. So you're good to go, and they got a 36 month pay as you go program. Uh, no interest on that, so you can knock it down to 25, 30 bucks a month. I like Those it. are the best mattresses. We really do own them. Mm -hmm. They've been a sponsor for fucking years at this mm -hmm. point. Wow. Uh, best in the biz, but uh, that's a nice bed to to screw on. Can I borrow yours and try it? Yeah. Okay. You can, you can take my mattress. I like it. Hop it on down the road. Roll it up. What? 
Yeah, this one gets shipped to your house in a box. Uh, you pop it open two hours later. You're ready to How screw. big do they go? Because we've been looking for a bigger king. Got to get a cow king. Yeah. Is I that what it's called? No, you don't cow. need a cow king. No, you don't. A cow king is thinner but longer. longer it's for yeah. taller men. For taller men. Like I himself. want something wider because my wife, after we make love, she wants to get as far away from me as she can. She actually says that. California. There, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. No, a king, or, uh, a king, king size. King, king okay. size yeah. is good. You yeah. can either do a king size bed or... Go sleep and on the, the adjustable bases, because yes. I know you get down, you guys get freaky. With the adjustable bases, they come with USB ports, um, flashlights, and all that shit. You can plug in a fucking vibrator, a whatever thing. you want into that. One of those electric yeah. chainsaws or whatever. Oh, yeah. You get a little danger in that bedroom, yeah. dude. Uh, you plug it in with a USB. Or you're just you go. juggling electric chainsaws while she's sucking your dick. <laughs> There's Dan. <laughs> There's Dan. <laughs> Dan's back. <laughs> I love it. Uh, next up, we got mybookie.com. Uh, mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros. We got UFC back. Uh, we got UFC back. Yeah, Saturday nights. It's the first sport back. Full card. Saturday night, full card. First sport back. And then they're going to do another one on the 14th and another one on the 20th. So we're good to go for a long time. Everybody's gambling. We want to let you know that, yes, we are back with mybookie.com. Uh, we haven't left. Sports have left, but uh, they haven't. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposits. And uh, we'll be making the picks uh, with you here um, week to week. Uh, John Anik was on this week, and uh, next week, who knows who's going to pop by the show because no celebrities are doing anything right now in quarantine. <laughs> Go to mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposit. I want to give myself a huge pat on the back. Uh, out of the 28 picks I made for the NFL draft, I went 24 and 4 and absolutely housed it. I got all those messages from you guys. We're all getting rich, motherfuckers. So it's been great. It's been great. Last but not least, we got KillCliffCBD.com. You, kill, you a CBD guy? I am. Love it, man. Have you had a can of this? I have not. Uh, take, a, take a can with you if you want. Yeah, I will. Um, it's, I'll try one. It's the best in the biz. 25 milligrams of CBD in every can. Mm. It's Kill Cliff, no THC, so you're not going to piss hot. Uh, if you're military or first responder out there, you're good to go on that. Yep. Uh, and the promo code Drinking Bros gets you 30% off. Damn. And free shipping, yeah. Comes right to your house. And let's face it, if you're stuck inside right now, you need a little uh, CBD to take the edge off, if you will. You know? Let's so go to KillClipCBD.com today. Type in the promo code Drinking Bros for 30% off and free shipping. What does a guy like you do to take the edge off, by the way? I work out. I, try to have I, I know you do, but after that, like... Yeah, you know, it's for, right now, you're going to laugh at me. Me and the family, we go for walks. Okay. I, that's what we do. We take the dog and we go for a walk. I, I wish it was something cooler. I know we're on Drinking Bros, but... Is that because of the quarantine or just in real life? We've always done it, but mm -hmm. now it's it's an SOP, a standard operating procedure. We fucking do it every day. Unless it's raining because we got a little chihuahua. Um, but yeah, we, we do it. It's kind of our... We're up to like two or three miles a day and we love it. And I'm, my thing is, is the shit that you're learning during the, the COVID-19, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep applying it because it's obviously working. I don't want to flip the switch back. I want to go back to the person I was because I think I'm actually a better person out of this shit right what now. What's the difference? I think you just – you have more time to hone in on things that are important. You know, like before it's – you're taking all these calls and, you, I, I, you know, I had so much shit coming in, podcasts and this and this and running around. Now it's like, hey, motherfucker, you got to stay home. Money's not coming in. Holy shit. Now what do I got to do? So it's – I just sit down and I, you know, I talk about my family, fitness, finance, and faith and – I just literally break it down. How do I monetize and you know, strategize and prioritize what's important? And I do it. And I think, you know, right now, without having all the outside distractions, I think people right now, I mean, the biggest problem about the COVID-19 right now is if you're driving, like like I came down here last night, mm -hmm. at night, the restroom, like if you have to take a shit, you have to take a shit on the side of the road. Everything's closed at night. Oh, my God. That's like the think, worst part of COVID-19. Seriously, it so is. So do you have a story about driving down here last night that you want to share? Yeah, did you take a shit on the side? Because I no, feel like I you were kind of leading no, into it. No, I like only <laughs> had a pee, but I, like went, I, I wanted to stop and get a water. You know, I drink a lot of water to stay hydrated, but I just I had to pull over on the side of the road like four times because gas stations are open, mm. but they're not open. It's just to get gas. Yeah. You know, normally you could go in there and use a restroom, but I was thinking like today, before I came here, I had to take a deuce. And I like hit up, I've, I think there's a Target or something that's not too far away. And you can still go in there. There's certain places that mm, you can go to. That's right. But you can't go into like, you know, I passed by a Taco Bell. McDonald's. You can't mm. go into those places. Yeah. So, you know, I have toilet paper in the truck in case of an emergency. Sure. The days of using the sock are over. Ah. Uh, Actually, I did, I did that before and a police officer caught me and they just laughed at me. They're I mean, like, who, yeah, who yeah. hasn't? 
Everybody has. Ran to yeah. the front of, or like ran in front of your formation a little bit, jumped into the woods. Oh, yeah, man. It, it happens side. all the time. But other than that, I mean, I don't know about you guys. The COVID, it's not killing me at all. I mean, I actually enjoy the the chaos. I do. I know people are like, you can't say that. I can. I'm in better shape than I was. Yeah. It's what, been almost two months. Yeah. I'm, money it hasn't really affected me. I've p- taken on more coaching clients because now more than ever, people need help. Of course. So I'm doing one-on-one coaching with people. I've got six fucking clients in the last four days. Yeah. yeah. Closing deals with my, my business that I do and, you know, the project that we do with Bedros Cooley. And we're, we're, people now are seeing that during chaos, they need to find some type of control. And so now they're like finally investing in themselves because everybody, I think, goes with the whole thought process is, you know, there's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. And I think right now everybody got slapped in the face and they're like, holy shit, what happens if because this could happen again? Yeah. And if it does, what are you going to do? I mean, unemployment is skyrocketed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I still haven't got any money. You know, you fill out for your little twelve hundred. I haven't got any of that shit. No, I don't know if I qualify, but I I don't uh, think we did either. But yeah, I I haven't got it. I haven't checked on it. it, Here's the way I look at it: like if you're if you feel like you're doing fine and nothing's you know wrong with you or your family, like I would rather not take money from the government. But I agree. Yeah, yeah. but I'm spending. I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm spending more time with my family. I've got a better relationship with my wife. We're working out together. We're doing the you know the the challenges that we're Mm -hmm. coming up with with better being hit you know nationwide um i've got a better relationship with my daughter and we spend time together every fucking night i mean literally i feel like i've rewinded if you take the cell phone away and you pull back out the the rotary phone yep break out the lawn darts and the fucking horseshoes we're back to when we were kids yeah we really are yeah yeah, yeah. and i loved it then you know you didn't need all this shit yeah for us so you know podcasts were deemed essential yeah uh 80 of our audience is you know military and first yep. responder so they're still working <clears throat> So therefore, we decided to go every single day during the quarantine for all of these shows uh, to give everybody content to listen to because yeah. Hollywood is shut down. Yeah. So it's kind of there's like four studios that are open in the United States. We're one of them. So we just keep gunning out shows for everyone. Um, my life hasn't changed besides not going to restaurants or you know yeah. dates and things like that. Yeah. I'm working double the hours, but I don't, I don't mind it. You know, obviously what I do for a living, I love. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you're right. I've, I've spent more time with my kids. That is more quality yeah versus hey man you got this school tomorrow and this other thing because i guess before i would lean on it as a crutch right of Mm -hmm. like oh they have school tomorrow yeah you know so hey get them to bed early uh the teacher's gonna teach them whatever they're gonna do i don't have to do shit you know um now it's like all right great i have to read with them i have to do yeah spelling numbers all that other stuff and it's me and that's one-on-one time that i I guess I took for granted where oh, I was yeah. like, oh, all right, cool. And you're right. Like, it is back to the point of when we were kids where, yeah, man, there is no, there's nothing on. There's nothing yep. to do. There's nowhere to go. So it's kind of us hanging out. We're, we're doing a lot of grilling out, a lot of hanging out in the okay. backyard, playing on sing, swing sets and all that other shit. And uh, I've enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Because th- during the early part of it, I was like, oh, fuck. It's man. that transition period. It fucking yeah. it kicks you in the balls. Yeah, I mean, like. We actually, every Sunday, if you see it, we have a barbecue truck come to our house, and Arita's truck, mm-hmm. and people just break out their lawn chairs, and literally, I break out the ruler just in case the police come. <laughs> Seven feet, I do. And we have police getting it, too. Like, we, we had, like, 40 people, you know, they're waiting in line to hang out, and it's like a little block party, and That's we're doing great. it every Sunday, and people are loving it, and it's just kind of my way to give back. Me and my wife were doing that, and it, it gives some sort of, I guess, you know reality check to people that you know you can't take things for granted i'm mm-hmm. telling you when i do things now i'm gonna go hey thank you like i went to starbucks this morning and the guy was like sorry it took so long i said shit man i'm just thankful you fucking got me a cup of coffee yeah yeah yeah. that you're open yeah you know? so i think uh yeah that's that's an interesting point like there's a lot of there's a lot of bonuses that have come out of this i suppose oh, yeah you know and i think i think and what what i'm worried about as soon as everything turns back on people are going to forget what the fuck they just went through until it happens again not me man not me i'm gonna be like roger that yeah, I'm working harder than I've ever worked. Same, um, and it's it's a different type of work. Yeah, where you feel grateful. I like, do. All right, great. Uh, I'm one of the lucky ones. Whereas I look at a lot of friends of mine, they're out of work. Yeah. Well, you saw this woman that got arrested yesterday, no. and are not arrested, but she got sentenced to seven days in jail for opening her business without oh the go- yeah, yeah, without yeah, yeah. permission yeah. for the government. What the fuck, dude? Crazy. Like but that that is that is the definition of tyranny. Yeah. When one person, the governor of a state, can say you can't fucking run your business that you started and the penalty for it is going to literal prison 
or to jail, I guess, yeah, in yeah, this yeah. case. Like, that is the definition of fucking tyranny. Fuck these people. She got seven days in jail. Yeah. Uh, because she's just trying to provide for herself and her family. Yeah, like maybe, maybe she makes $72,000 a year, right? So it's right there near the cusp. And those people at the higher end of, the, of lower middle class, I guess if you call it that these days, they're going to not get checks until like June or something. Yeah, shit, yeah. Right? The second wave of checks. So they're just like for the last two months have been like, all right, cool. Like I can't, not only can I not run my business, and if you're making 60 grand a year, 1200 bucks is, uh, I mean, it's a substantial amount of money, but it's not going to cover you for two months. Especially yeah, if you got a family, man. dude. If you got yeah. kids and shit. It's like, not going to cover you for two months. There's no fucking way your rent yeah. is more than that. Yeah. Uh, it, it's crazy. And look, I hopefully everything will open up soon. Ours, we're in North Carolina. It's supposed to open up on Friday. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Uh, what about you in Virginia? Uh, St. Friday is what they're saying. There's Friday's the waves, you know, the three-week waves of stuff and and I, I even think when things open back up, it's still going to be a clusterfuck because, like, you know, they're supposed to be open in gyms, but they want you six feet away from each other in yeah. limited numbers. It's like, if I'm paying for something, I want to be able to go to the gym and work out when I work out. I mean, yes. I'm not going to, like, come in there with my pants off and mm-hmm. do the stupid shit I'm doing here, but I think everything's still going to be restricted. Even though I, I think they're doing that to give some people some type of sense of, of calm, mm-hmm. but... You think they're just you know you're going to be able to go to an outback and there's going to be 100 people in there again? Fuck no. Yeah. Uh, you know they're going to use like every other booth mm-hmm. or something and service is going to it's going to be a mess. I think the repercussions and the ramifications of this is going to be about a year before we're up and running after they say we're back to whatever the the final phase is. I, you know. Yeah. Not to mention, don't even get me started about the economy. The economy Bro. is fucking President Trump said it. He's like, we got to turn this fucking switch on this, co- or we're not going to have a, con- a company. He said, or, look, excuse me, a country. He mm-hmm. goes, look, I made America great again once. I'm going to have to do it again because yeah. people don't realize what's about to happen. Because all these mortgages and rents that have been lax for three months, yep. when that three months is up, hey, guys, we, we're going to need that money that, uh, that we let you go And I dipped in my savings, on. and I did, I pay, I'm paying everything on time because of that, because they're going to come fucking looking. I oh, called, yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, we'll give you three months, no yeah, problem. Right. I'm like... Okay, but what happens when we we'll have to pay that? Well, we'll we'll t- we'll talk about that when it. No, 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 no. And it's going to August. It's it sounds gonna, like a fucking bookie. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. What's gonna, the rate on that? It's <laughs> definitely going to be in a way that butt fucks people. Yeah, for but sure. it's hurting people. I mean, definitely, I'm dipping into savings, you know. But I think as as a civilization, you know, we were built to weather storms. You know, we're waterproof, right? You mm-hmm. know, and we're fucking tough. I just think society has, and I, I'm sorry to say this has fucking crippled us and made us weak as a whole. You know, we have in this country, you have, you can have anything you fucking want. Mm-hmm. You know, other countries don't have half the shit we do and they still get by, you know, I don't, whatever. But now that they've taken everything from us, I am so, you know, fucking grateful. You know, it's like, don't be greedy, be fucking grateful. Yeah. You know, you're still healthy. You still, you still got a family. You know, if you haven't been thrown out of your house, we will bounce back. It's just a matter of when I hope you know, somebody turns this shit back on. Um, you know, I have my own thoughts about the COVID-19. Same. Yeah. I, look, I, I think the media way, media, way yeah. fucking blew yeah. this out of proportion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's the deal. I'm not sick. I'm not getting fucking sick. I know a whole lot of fucking people on the planet. I think between the three of us, we know a lot of fucking people. Yeah. I don't know one person that's sick. Now, I know this shit came out during allergy season when I was mm-hmm. fucking coughing and sneezing. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people die from the flu. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people die from um, heart disease, but you don't see anybody closing down fucking McDonald's. No. When they say that that contributes to, I don't know how many, they say over a thousand people a day die from like something that's related to fast food. But, yeah. You know, you notice when uh, they shut Virginia down, they didn't shut the ABC store down. No. They didn't smoke, shut down them cigarettes. <laughs> they know because even in the time of chaos, they're fucking making money. Yeah, a lot the of this liquor's been, essential, brother. <laughs> everything has an agenda, man. I'll, I'll tell everybody that everything and everything that's been going on has some sort of agenda. Um, you know, I'm waiting for the Democrat to pr- produce the fucking miracle cure for this, and then we'll be back to normal, and then, you know— Trump will be gone and because the Democrats Democrats saved the day. Yeah. <laughs> and I love Trump. I'll make sure I say that. Yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Whatever Ruth Bader Ginsburg's taking is what they should be giving people. Um, yeah. She just beat another surgery She's today. like the goddamn yeah. Terminator, dude. It's crazy, yeah. dude. She's T2. She's uh, the T1000 or whatever. That Robert, RBG Robert Patrick 3000, played. dude. The RBG yeah. 3000. <laughs> she just like turns to liquid metal and fucking comes straight back. Yeah. Yeah, she's uh, Stop rubbing never going to die. Fucking poke your it's eye out. It's totally fine. Look, you've got to be comfortable with his sexuality, not your own. I don't know Those if his, his sexuality, you're a, 
you're probably a pansexual. How many dudes have you fucked? Never fucked one dude. Come on. Really? Nope. On accident? I've gotten close in buds, you know, getting nut the butt, but that's it. Mm-hmm. You didn't ever <laughs> slip in a little bit? Nope. Not even, not even, I haven't even stuck this, I haven't even touched it. Nope. You've touched a, another man's penis for sure. Let me see. With your hand? Yeah, 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 I just did. Yeah, you just did. Actually, first, did. first that time ever. Big. Thanks. First time ever. I, I work out, so you're welcome. I mean, I kind of poked it. I, I didn't know it was that big. I was trying to go around it. Well, it's like when you walk up on a on a dog and think it's cute. You're like pet it, and then it turns around and it's a Rottweiler, and you just walk out, right? Yeah. You don't want to get involved in that. That's exactly. Are you yeah. Referring to your cock is a Rottweiler. Rottweiler. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to get involved in that, it. It's a Rottweiler that holds a gold chain, <laughs> kind of like this one. It's heavy. <laughs> Fucking touched it. I was like, I tried pushing it. Wouldn't move. <laughs> I'm going to get a gold chain for my dick. We were talking about Manscaped earlier. I got to stay trimmed up because my dick literally grows a fucking turtleneck pu- sweater it's on it. It's pubic hair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, like my dick has sideburns or some shit. Yeah, I don't know. I think they should shadow. come out for hair dye for the balls. You know, they're getting close to that. Yeah. Yeah. They're getting close to that. They've got these. Uh, They've got the beard just for men beard stuff. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm Which sure is great. The same. Which yeah, is great. That would probably burn you. No, because that could burn you because people actually have. Reactions to the face. Oh, you don't, shit, do, really. yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, want yeah. that down there. Yeah. It's tough. You, they, they've got to come up with some type of a better formula for it, so or you got to shave it all off. Hypoallergenic. Yeah, because if it's uh, if you got a Santa Claus, you know, pubic hair down there, nobody wants to. see I don't that. know why anybody will it's want mental. hair there. I don't it's know mental. what the reason for that is. Why? I mean, uh, sweat. You know, because there's nothing to catch it. Now uh, it's kind of like nose hair. You need to keep a little bit of it. You know, so you're not just uh, ingesting everything. I'd rather just run down. Well, you're a different man. <laughs> yes, I am. Ray, why uh, don't you why don't you get lasered? Have you thought about it? I heard it's painful. It is. It's kind of painful, and you have to go to eight sessions, and you can't be in the sun with that part of your body for that whole time. If you were going to laser me eight times, I'd do it. Well, maybe maybe we can work something out. That's what we ought to get here. Maybe we get a sponsor. Yeah, we need a a laser laser sponsor. sponsor. I would go live and let you do that. (laughs) Well, I mean... Yeah, Jared almost. We almost did a, a V sack with Jared live on air. A vasectomy. Holy shit! Yeah, I know what it is. Holy yeah, fuck! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah we should do that with, to, to not have any more children. Though. Yeah, for sure. God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we should. We we actually. This is not even a joke. A black rifle. We kind of toyed with the idea of doing like trying to get a corporate discount on vasectomies. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think it'd be better for the world. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You're an intense guy, Navy SEAL, obviously. Yeah. Um, do you follow the world and, like, missions that are going on in the world and things like that? Um, there was one that has popped up in the last couple of days, mm-hmm. and more and more details keep coming out about it. And it, it seems like something that everybody dreams of, but they would never do. So there was a fucking attempted coup mm-hmm. in uh, Venezuela yep. for Maduro. Mm-hmm. And two Americans were captured in this. Uh, Florida-based ex-Green Beret officer... Uh, says that U.S.-backed opposition leader Juan Guidado, I don't know if I'm saying that right, or Guaido, 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 part of a plan to liberate Venezuela. Um, is that, I mean, is that real? I Honestly, th- I, I got to be honest with you. Since COVID-19 has started, uh-huh. I, I'm not going to bullshit you. I have not watched the news once. Really? Really. I, I, I can't. Normally, I follow on things like that and try to see what's going on in the world. I have literally, in our house, we have shut the media and the news down because I cannot handle any more bullshit. I can't. I have not listened to the news and probably I know I'm I know I'm gonna sound like people are like he's an uneducated Irishman. No. Yeah. About six, seven weeks I have not turned on the news. No shit. Only when the governor speaks of what he's gonna do do we turn it on and literally by that time we have the T V brick, we throw the brick at the T V and we turn it off. Why is that? Why is it what? That, that you just you Because I because I don't believe half the shit that goes on. I don't No, I'm the same way. I, and I'm not and you know, this story sounds almost unbelievable, which is which is why I brought it up. But it keeps gaining steam. Uh, and Anything that it has causes chaos or panic these days causes steam. You know, I'd like to see a, a, a something in the news where it's just somebody did something good. Right. You don't see that because that doesn't no. cause it doesn't sell. Does, it doesn't sell. Right. No. Sex sells. Mm-hmm. I don't. I am. My age. The, the stuff. Oh, I almost said it. The stuff I used to do. I'm done with that now. I don't care what's going on right now until this COVID-19 is going on. Only thing I'm focusing on right now, as selfish as it sounds, is me, my family, and the people that I can reach out and help. That's, that's my bubble right now in this world. Until we get the world turned back to one, because every time I turn the fucking news on, mm-hmm. I literally, my blood pressure goes up. Because yeah. it's like, people are dying, and we're thanking people for doing their jobs, and we're doing this, and we're doing that, and... You know, the numbers never never add up. It's 90,000. It's 30,000. I feel like we're fucking, it was the, the voting when Hillary, Hillary won. Remember? Hillary yeah, won. Yeah, 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 and yeah, then yeah. all of a sudden, here comes Trump, and you see these 12-year-olds crying. 
Yeah. I, that's all the news is right now. It's just bullshit. Yeah, because with this story in particular, I always wondered if you guys sat around, mm -hmm. uh, you know, seals and whatever, like, and just been been like, man, I bet you we still got it. We could fucking overthrow government. Yeah, we right do now. stuff like that. Like right now, my daughter's doing a, her, she's got her final report for the year is um, on terrorism, and they're talking about the raid on uh, Bin Laden, and mm -hmm. I was like, really? Yeah, and she's what grade is that? She's in sixth grade, and I'm sitting there on the phone talking to my buddy, and she's in there with her her teacher, and they're doing a live. And I go, hold on a second. And they're talking about it. I go, here, Rob O'Neill, just talk to him. And literally, Rob O'Neill gets on here and says, yeah, we did this, this, and this. And the teacher was just like, uh. Because <laughs> Rob doesn't have a filter in it yeah, no to shit. a bunch of, you know, sixth graders, boom, and got off the phone. So, yeah, we do, we do sit around drinking and wondering if we, we could, if we could be our own coup and we could do this. Believe me, it's happened before, but. That's what's so fascinating about this story is <clears throat> apparently these guys thought, hey, fuck it. I just can't imagine that this would go on without the backing of the United States. Is this guy? This story got, is is gained so much traction. It's gotten big enough that Trump actually had to release a statement. Yeah, which he said, "Hey, man, Venezuela's situation has nothing to do with our government. Uh, we'll find out. We just heard about it. Well, blah, it's blah, Silver blah, Corp. Blah. It's a private military contracting company out of Florida. That's yeah. who did it. And the guy that's the CEO of it admitted they were there trying to do some shit. But on behalf of us, or just just to do it." probably just getting paid a whole lot of money by Look, some man there's there are about I, I don't know there's a bunch of airlines that are, are fucking private airlines and they only work for the nsa and cia right yeah. like that's public knowledge now so it's like yeah of course they were working on our behalf to what really end? yeah of course they were working on our behalf like you can't right if you're if you're inside if you're a pmc that's based out of the united states and you do shit that the government doesn't tell you to do you get butt fucked to death mm -hmm. immediately and your company gets dissolved like you i always can't wondered that. that man yeah so when this story popped up i was like we had to have paid for this right like, of course we did yeah. of course things i mean yeah we're funding things someone is funding some hedge company or prop company or whatever mm -hmm. i can i can diff use a bunch of different terms with agencies and stuff but yeah mm -hmm. someone's paying for it so it doesn't get back to anyone mm -hmm. but yeah of course so let me let me flip it around then uh is there other countries that are paying to do it to us oh, right I'm now sure. well not inside well that's not true I'm, there are plenty of foreign agents inside the u.s but uh yeah south and central america have been stomping grounds for the russia v america f battle since the 1960s Forever. you know what i mean or the fifth, uh, technically the late fifty. So it's yeah, it's nothing new. Why isn't? Why do you think you guys in particular? Why do you think no one's ever taken a shot at a president? It's been a while. Uh, Reagan was the last one, I think. Yeah, um, but that was. I mean, Reagan was a crazy person, and JFK was the CIA. They 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 killed him. So it's like, when's the last time a foreign agent tried to take out one of our presidents? Yeah, that's when good, is that's that? a good question. Yeah, uh, and and has that happened? And we just didn't know about it. You think? Hmm. Well, there's only technically what five or six countries that have nuclear weapons right mm -hmm. if you like if let's say 9-11 as bad as it was if they had also assassinated the president right there holy shit like donald first of all our dick cheney would have become president right right <laughs> everyone would have died i think <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure like people don't want because he, he would have blown that up yes, he would have started he absolutely a, a would, world, yeah. Yeah, so okay. it's like you can't it, it's like fighting uh, a much larger person yourself. You immediately walk in and start looking for weaknesses, whereas the larger person is just like, gonna, I'm going to brute force the fuck out of this guy, right? Yeah. So United States is brute force, mm -hmm. although our kinetic operations are very tactical, which is why we've stayed ahead of everybody else. But uh, we're brute force. So anybody that's coming at us has got to take that tactical route because they can't just face us straight up. Do you think anybody would challenge Trump and take a shot at Trump? If he gets reelected. Because, look— after this last election, yeah. it was fucking near meltdown levels. And I think I said it on this show, and I, I want to say it was with Evan. And I was like, man, I, the level of crazy that it's gotten to mm -hmm. on the left, I, I, I think somebody will probably try. I think it would be more likely that some uh, anarchist or, or, or leftist in the, from the United States would try yeah. to take a shot than a foreign agent, for sure. Yeah, or, they, yeah, yeah. or a foreign agent might try to make it look like some dumb portland street person took him out but yeah i yeah. don't think any foreign agency wants to have anything come back on their country especially yeah. with someone like trump because mm -hmm. i think trump trump roll up his sleeves and say all right motherfucker let's go to work you know you don't want to fuck with us that would that would be the problem like it trump is one thing look there is a i think there's a pretty decent chance that the only reason we went to iraq is because george w bush was mad that they tried to kill his father 
I th- I honestly think I know that's reductive and it makes him maybe see seem petty or whatever the fuck. But I guarantee you that played a role, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I agree. So imagine Trump, somebody trying to assassinate Trump and failing, and imagine what Trump would do in response to that. Like it would be bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I don't think anybody wants to take that chance. Uh, next question. I got uh, Kim Jong Un. I got him in my death pool that he's already dead. Mm-hmm. Have you heard from anyone, all, any of your friends, that he's dead? No. No. Rob O'Neill said he's dead. I, I have speculation that I think he is, but mm-hmm. without conclusive proof, you know, talking to an audience this big, I'd just be like blowing smoke up your mm-hmm. ass, and I don't want to do that. I think there's some evidence that states he is. You know, obviously, people in power can pass on, and then the people that want that message to still go on they can still do it right you know it's it's happened at other levels not that high of a level but um so i think he's brain dead and they're trying to figure out the succession of power right now that's what i think yeah i so think, there's I, a I lot think of, he's, he's dead um i think there's a lot of people that are pulling at that power and they're trying to figure that out there's mm, people that yeah. want that and you know everybody's gonna i mean everybody wants a shot at the title right mm, I mean, yeah but yeah i do i think he is i mean i i'm i, I watch the political stuff i know you guys love hitting it but uh but I do. I think until people can sort things out, we won't get a conclusive answer yeah. with my air quotes. Yeah, 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 there's yeah. not going to be a conclusive answer until North Korea comes out and tells us what happened. Exactly. Because there's, we don't have shit. And, I mean, we have agents inside the country, are, uh, but we don't have, like, officers. We don't yeah. have – We don't. There, I, there could be, but I highly doubt we have case officers just chilling around in fucking North Korea. I you think know I mean? we know exactly what they want us to know. Yeah, is what I think. Yeah. I do. I do. With yeah. they don't fuck around. I mean, it's, I, I, I'm, we've I'm we've on done the a bunch of camp. we've done a bunch of weird operations there before though. Like we we tried to pipe Wi-Fi into the southern part of North Korea before, so they can see that there's an outside world that exists and shit like that. Because on the on the North Korean internet, it's like the Chinese internet. It's a completely separate thing from what we see. And there's they block everything. They they were able to within like two days <laughs> block all of South Park. Yeah, mentions on social media. Fucking the show, ComedyCentral.com, all of it. They were able to do that just in a matter of minutes or a matter of days. So it was like they have very tight control over there. They, yeah. you, you, like you said, they, we know exactly what they want us to know. Yeah. And that's it. Was there any crazy shit that you were sent on or missions that you almost did that uh, never happened that you were like, oh, shit, if that would have went down, that would have been pretty crazy? Um, post seals we did some stuff we'll just say crossing borders Mm -hmm. um taking things and dropping them off cacheting things where if things went bad um yeah you know there's no get out of jail free card right right, right. you know so you know when you start dabbling around with places that border iraq Mm -hmm. that begin with you know you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah and you're dropping things off there in the middle of the night you know things that go boom yeah there's some there's some shit that could happen um Things where, you know, you jump out and you're like, holy fuck, if this thing doesn't come back and get me, I am fucked. You know, yeah. me and, it's usually like me, me, it was two guys usually, and then we had another guy that had, you know, kind of a sniper set up to just watch us as we, you know, because we'd have to go off, get off something and run to a certain point and put something there and cache it and then run back, but it fucking sucks, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, we've done that a bunch of times, you know, and it's like, hey... You might drop this off, and that might be it, you know? You can't tell the wife what you're doing. You mm. can't say anything. And it's like, yeah, he died in a training accident or something like that. Yeah. And it's like, fuck. So, yeah, it's <laughs> – and I know there's a lot of other stuff that goes on. A lot of, you know, a lot of great people that are doing so many great things. And, you know, but, you know, when you when you sign up for whatever it is you sign mm-hmm. up for you, and you take whatever oath that is – you know, it's, you got to step up or fucking get out. And, yeah, I stepped, you know, you step, stepped up. and But, yeah, you know, and I can't say one of the guys, but he, he was the one guy I worked with was a legend in the Special Forces community. Legend. And, uh, yeah, I was nervous. And, hey, Cat Daddy, just slow it down. You got it. I'm like, all right. So maybe somebody can guess who that is just from what I said. If you know him, don't, I ain't saying his name. But uh, definitely humbling, you know, because it's <laughs> like, he's, you know, we land and be like, listen. We only got to go fucking a football field. We may not make it back. I'm like, God damn, that's not what I want to hear, bro. <laughs> you know, that's not what I want to hear. You know, fucking helos coming in. I can't see shit. I'm like walking around like I'm at night, no night vision, trying to find my old lady's titties. I'm like, what the hell? Carrying heavy shit, dropping it. Yeah. Fucking running back, you know? Do you think that's why you're so grateful for the life you have today? Oh, because, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, I'm grateful for the life I have because I've been to every fucking hellhole on the planet. Yeah. And 
I just have worked with such great fucking people. I mean, in the military, the people I hang out with, you know, I know I bust Bert's balls and Tyler all the time, but they're probably two of the greatest fucking human beings I've ever met in my life. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Edit, edit that out. <laughs> Seriously. But, We're um, keeping it in. It, but it's just, yeah, I am grateful because I have been blessed to have been in hell holes, gone through some horrible shit, seen some horrible things happen to my friends, been grateful enough, you know, you know been blessed enough to come home. So I just look at things different, you know, like I always, no matter how bad something gets, I always go, shit could be worse. That's what I say every day. COVID-19 shit could be worse. Yeah, true. I think uh, a couple of people, Dakota's one of them, have have talked about since this COVID thing, like you've, I feel like I've been training for this my whole life. Yeah, Dan in particular. To do, to sit at home and avoid people. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) You're talking about Dakota? No. No, no, me. Oh, but Dan, Dan is a person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. yeah, well, you're just a dick. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, I mean, you're you're built for this. You're, like, yeah. not su- – I mean, you're, yeah. you're not super social. You're social with people that you like. Like, right. you're not even sociable with me. Like, I'll say, hey, man, I de- – like this morning, I said, hey, man, I deleted your text by accident. Sorry. Um, I'm here early. Can I get the text? It's not like, oh, yeah, sure. It's just there's the text. That's it. No no <laughs> hi, no nothing. Hey, just, buddy. You're like Bert. It's like, hey, Bert, how you doing? Good. Hey, man, it's been six months I've seen you. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? You're fat. And then that's the end of our conversation. And then Bert will tell me he loves me. Yeah. 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 You know, this guy. I'm just, trying ever, to, I'm just trying to get information out. That's it. Have you ever just called to ask how I'm doing, how I'm feeling? I would never do that. <laughs> and why? this, because you won't stop trying to touch me with your dick, Ray. That's well, maybe why. if you showed me some attention. Yeah. <laughs> is this what it you is you're acting out? Show that dick yeah. a little attention. <laughs> It'll get off you. I'll get the doll. You can tell me where I'm trying to touch you at. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is the point in the show, Ray. We get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you yeah. are today. Uh, maybe somebody that's helped you out during the, the quarantine. Yeah. Um, it's actually two people. I have to give them both credit if I can. It's going to be, obviously, my business partners and my bosses, Steve Eckhart and uh, Bedros Koulian. Um, They have literally fucking stepped up. And I'm not going to lie. When this COVID-19 shit started happening, the first thing that people do you panic, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to lose my job. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Because I'm a full-time employee now. I don't do that other stuff anymore. Right. And I literally, first thing I do is I go, holy fuck. And he's like, listen, as long as you work for me, as long as you're, you're hustling, mm-hmm. as long as you're checking in, you know, like, because they're in California and I'm here. So that's a weird job, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm producing. And they're always there to give me a guiding hand. Because that's the thing, you know, I know I'm a motivator. But even motivators need to be motivated. Even educators got to be ed- educated. Mm-hmm. And even decimators got to be fucking decimated. So they're really good at putting me in my place. And they've been really teaching me how to step out of my comfort zone in business. Like carrying a gun's easy. Mm-hmm. I'm used to it. You know, it's amazing what you yeah. get comfortable to. But when it goes to like signing deals and contracts and closing deals and shit, like literally they told me, you were the worst fucking closer on the <laughs> planet. Because I'm like so honest. I'm like, listen, we charge $25,000 for this. Listen. If you just give me fucking nineteen five, we can do it right now. And they're like, oh, that's the negotiation? I'm like, yeah, it's nineteen five. And they're like, that's not how you do it. I'm like, oh, fuck. But I don't have time. You know, that's mm-hmm. the hand of time. It's like, let's just cut to the chase yeah. and get it done. But, um, yeah, those guys right now are my biggest. They're mentors. They're friends. They're brothers. And I really, really look up to them. And I'm grateful as fuck because, you know, they, they trusted me. And I left that other world of carrying a gun and doing all this stuff of since 1994 i mean i just stopped and wow so it's every day is new every day is scary but i like it you know what i mean mm. it's i like the challenge because i tell people you know you're never if you don't create change or excuse me if you don't create challenge if you don't challenge yourself mentally mm-hmm. physically emotionally socially spiritually every fucking day you're never going to change and i was so comfortable with just deploying carrying a gun collecting my check and coming home mm. You know, I wasn't spending time with my wife. I wasn't spending time with my daughter. I, w- I wouldn't be here with you guys, gracing you with my pants off. Yeah. So they literally have been helping me the whole way through. You know, and I'll tell you, and to give credit to, um, Bert and I, since we did the show, has been telling me to get out of that other line of work for, what, three, four years? I mean, yeah. and, and what I love about B is he doesn't just sugarcoat. He's like, look, you're better than this. You know, I saw you on the show. You know, I'm being serious here. You need to find a better way of life yeah. and soon as I, I he was the first person I called I said hey Bert I'm, I've hung up those cleats and he's like I'm proud of you buddy you're still fat and he got off the phone but that's yeah. his way of saying he loves mm-hmm. me so yeah it'd be it'd be uh, 
Bedros and Steve, and then obviously Bert's more of a, he helps guide me. Because, you know, you guys know I'm a lot. You know, I'm fucking intense. Bert, Bert you're, comes you're across. In, you're intense in a fun way, though. Yeah, like, yeah. I but, enjoy being around you all the time. Like, there's people that you know that are intense that you're just like, God damn it, man. Dial you're, it down. You're like, your thoughts. You're like a 240 Bravo and you're fucking uh, AGL. You're, you're gun, uh, your team leader or whatever is guiding you in on target, and that's Bert. Yeah, like and he's, you know what's funny about Bert is he always acts so not, he's fucking a phenomenal businessman. Wicked fucking smart. Yeah, and, uh, and Candace, too. He's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, she's the brain of that operation. There's no fucking, I don't even going to hide that. But I call him like <laughs> Silent Bob, you know, because yeah. like he'll just say, hey, buddy, you know, you're good at motivating people. You're good at doing. So I'm literally doing exactly what Bert told me to do three fucking years ago. Mm. Online coaching, corporate training, and then fucking, you know, the, the beat downs that we do for these guys with the project. So I literally just, only thing he said is, why the fuck did it take you three years? Because I fucking was scared. Which, you know, I, I take full ownership of that, you know, and it's hard when you're looking at guys that are really good at what they do, but I was scared shitless, you know, like, what if I fail? He's like, motherfucker, are you kidding me? And he was right. And the only thing I regret now, that's why I got that fucking tattoo on my hand. It's the mm -hmm. hand of time. That's the one thing that, you know, you can't, we can't turn back. Yeah. So I wasted three fucking years. Yeah. I could have been like, you know, I could have came here and you could have been waiting for me with a fucking parade. Mm -mm. And showed some respect, but no, no. there's that's just not going to happen. <laughs> I'll get big when I get big. You will. No, yes, no. I'll I'll wait for somebody. I else bet to you do when Matt and Evan come in here, you fucking got red carpet rolled out and shit. And no, no, no actually, no. they no, just come on the same. show. No, no one, no one has ever asked for red carpet. Well, I have, no. Diva. Okay, yeah. just get red carpet in the bottom of your shoes. That way, you're always walking on it. Forty dollars. <laughs> you know where I got it from. Finest jacket on the planet. Finest pl jacket on the planet. From exactly. Are you still market. doing podcasts? I am. Yes. It's, 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 tell everybody the name of your podcast. So, yeah, we're, we're doing the Overcome and Conquer show. That's with Jason Redman and I. And uh, we're gaining a lot of traction and momentum. And I've asked you guys to come on. You know, we're, we're still We'd growing. Love to. We'd yeah, love we to. got Mike Ritland's dropping tomorrow. Oh, we good. just had we just had him on, by the way. Fantastic guest. Great. Yeah, dude. He's great. Did he fly Fuck. in or did he call? No, we, everybody's Zoom. doing Zoom because yeah. of the, the COVID shit. And see, right? I remember when I called you, I was like, I do not want to do that. I'd rather just drive down. Yeah. No, and we're, and we're fine with that, by yeah. the way. Like, we're anti, like, hey, we're going to hug people. We're going to fucking shake hands. Like, blow ball hair on each other mm -hmm. clearly but, yeah, after today. We go, we're doing every other Thursday. So we launched this Thursday. Um, we've had some big names on. We want to get you guys on. We got Stu Smith. We got a whole bunch of people that are coming. Mike O'Hearn. Um, but you know we're growing. You yeah. Know, and I, I call this guy all the time and ask mm -hmm. him for advice. So I'm not too proud to ask for advice, but uh, it's growing. It's growing good. You know, yeah, and, you're and great at it. We like it. You're great you know? at it. Yeah. We like it. I, um, I do piss in a bottle. That's the one thing that I just caught you looking at my dick. No. Yeah. Yes, there was a a I don't steal glances. glances. I'll just straight up look at it. If I don't there's need to a steal two, glances. Jamie, was that on a two shot when that happened? Was because that two if shot? So, it was right on them. Thank so you. if you're at home and you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to Drinker Bros yeah, Podcast re on rewind. YouTube. Jamie, uh, Jamie, can you slow mo that? Yeah, we can. We, no, I want the audience to find it and then send it in, and we'll post it. Yeah, on find the page. a screenshot because I don't think I did. But I if think I did, you did. I don't. Yeah, I'm I not one it. to steal glances. I usually just go eye to eye. Look, you keep stealing glances. One of these times, the, he's not going to give the them back. The clip that we had from when I was on last time, when I pulled it out, you like looked away. I watch that probably once a week. <laughs> it makes me laugh so much. It was one of my favorite moments in the 600 shows we've done. And or whatever this is, is why. Because the look you made is the look my wife gives me when I try to have sex with her. She's just like, oh, fuck. Okay, let's yeah. get this shit over with. I that's, swear to God. That's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> let's get it over with. <laughs> She's all done with your bullshit. Where can everybody find you on social media? Yeah, I'm on um, at Ray Cash Care on Instagram. You can hit me up on LinkedIn, Cash Care, and I have a yeah, former uh, Ray Cash Care, former Navy SEAL on Facebook. That's the best places to find me. Awesome. Awesome. I love your Instagram. Uh, Thank you. To me, you're one of the most inspirational people on the planet, one of our favorite guests. Uh, please, please come back again. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Uh, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, Ray Cash Care, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>